Hi everyone, how are you? In today's video, we are going to show you other capabilities of the text-to-columns tool. So we know text-to-columns as a way to separate data from within a cell. So for example, here, I have cells with names, wherein it's formatted as last name, comma, first name. And I could use text-to-columns to separate the uh, data into two columns when there is a delimiter like this, like comma, I could check this and then click next. And I could assign a destination so that instead of overwriting the values of column A, we're going to put the answers under column B instead and then click finish. So this is the typical use of text to columns. But there are other things that text to columns can do. Like, for example, I have this data over here and I have some transaction dates some delivery dates and amounts. And in some regions, this kind of format may not be acceptable. So maybe in your country or in, in your setup, this may be a valid format for numbers, but that's not the case for everyone. So unfortunately, it's going to be very difficult to convert this using other functions because this format is simply not recognized by the settings of the computer of the user. So we can use text to columns to fix this problem. So in this one, I have here some dates and the separator that the month, day, year is using is a period. So I'm going to convert this into dates. So the first one should be December 1st, November 14th, July 9th, August 12th. Now you have to make sure that the format that you have here should be the same as what you have in your laptop or in your computer. So here, my format is 10-17-2023. Uh, so Excel will then recognize this format as the month, day, and year. So you have to also consider that when you're converting your text data like this into dates. So right now, this is being treated as text, and we're going to convert it to a date. So to start, we highlight the cells that we want to convert. And then we go to data. and then text columns. We have to choose delimited because our data has delimiters. We, ha we have periods or dots for the separator. So we'll go with delimited and then we're going to click next. In the second step, we're not going to select anything here. So we're going to deselect anything that is checked. The reason why we leave this blank is because this feature of text columns will separate the cells into several columns. Like for example, if I choose other and type period here, you will see that the text to columns will separate them. That's not our intention. We don't want them to separate. We just want them to be converted into a format of a date that we recognize. So we will not select anything in this second step. We then move on to the next step. We're in, we're going to identify that that column that we've highlighted is actually a date. And then you have to make sure that you select the right format for the date. So here I have 12.1.2023. Here is November 14, 2023 for the second one. So my data is in MDY format. So I will choose the first one here, MDY. But take note that if your data is arranged differently, then you have to select the right format of the date here. And then we're going to click finish. And take note, I did not change the destination because I want my Excel to overwrite the details or the values of column A. So click finish. And as you can see, Excel formatted that column into a date that we can recognize. Take note that your delimiters do not have to be the same. So for example, under column B here, I have dates again, but it's not uniform. The separator is either a period or a comma or comma, comma. So for some reason, whoever prepared this data really needs to be coached about how to properly put dates. But we don't have a choice. We have to process this now. So we highlight those cells, we go to data, and then text to columns. As usual, we have to choose delimited because that is how we're going to um, split the data into its 
segments. Now, we're not going to check anything again because we don't want the data to separate into columns. We, don't, we want it to retain as one column. And I hope here you realize that another reason why we don't check any delimiter is because it could be anything. Here I have a period and a comma. So text to columns understands what delimiters are. Okay, they are characters technically, so you don't really have to indicate anything here in the second step. And then click next. The destination, I'll keep it as it is, B2. And I have to make sure that I declare that that column is a date column. And then now I have here the MDY format and then click finish. So now I have the dates again fixed okay, to the correct format. Now another feature of text volumes is when we have something like this, you have amounts. And maybe in some countries, this is the way that they write their numbers. Like this is 5,046 uh, centavos. But of course, in some regions, that's not the case. So there's actually a function in Excel that can do this. You could use the function number value and click the cell, comma. Second element is the decimal separator. So you want to indicate the number value. What is the delimiter or the symbol that is used to separate the decimals from the rest of the numbers? In this case, it's the comma. I then have to indicate the group or the thousand separator. In this case, that's the period doing the job. The number value will sort of like analyze and convert that number into something that your computer will understand. But of course, sometimes you don't want to create extra columns, but instead we can just format this cell and we can do that using text to columns. So we again highlight the cells and then we go to uh, data and then under data we go to text to columns under text to columns we choose delimited again we do not want to select anything here because we really don't want to separate that column into several columns we just want it to be formatted the correct way This time, we have to keep that column as general, but this time we have to choose advanced. Under advanced, you have to identify what is the symbol acting as the decimal separator. So just like how we do it with a number value, so the decimal separator is going to be the comma, and the thousand separator is going to be the period. So we just declared which one is acting as the decimal separator and which one is the group or the thousand separator. And then I'll click OK. I'll retain C2 as my um, destination cell and then click Finish. I now have text to columns formatted the amounts the correct way. Now let's have more features of text to columns. So I have another worksheet here, and I have phone numbers, and the phone numbers are formatted in such a way that I have the first three digits, the middle three digits, and the last four digits, and they're separated with hyphens. So text to columns can actually also be used to extract values from within a set of cells. So for example, here, I want to get the middle three digits of the phone numbers. So you can actually use this, of course, with another function. You could use mid function for this. I could say mid, and then get the cell. And then I want to indicate that I want to start from the fifth character, counting the hyphen. And then I want to extract three characters from that position, from the fifth position. And I get 761. However, if I don't want to use a formula, I could just split this. Okay, or just extract those three numbers. So I'm going to highlight the cells, go to data, text to columns, and then I'm going to choose delimited as usual because I have hyphens as the separators, and then click next. 
Now this time I have to select a separator. So I'll choose other. And then in that field, beside the other option, I will type the symbol hyphen. And then I will click next. Now take note that I only want the first three digits or the middle three digits of my data. So I could actually de uh, declare that the first column should be skip. I also want to skip the third column. So I will click here and also declare to skip this column. So you will notice that the word skip is showing up in my data preview. Now I want to determine my destination. So I would like to put it here. And then now I could click finish. So now I managed to extract the middle three digits using text to columns. And there you go. I hope you realized many things that you can do with text to columns. If you have any questions, feel free to use the comment section and I'll try to answer as soon as I can. But for now, I hope you like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.